Okay, this is chapter 4.3, rotations. How can you rotate a figure in a coordinate plane is the essential question. What you will learn is to perform rotations, perform compositions with rotations, identify rotational symmetry. So those are what we'll be doing in this chapter section. Okay, performing rotations. Or concept. Rotations. A rotation is a transformation in which a figure is turned about a fixed point called the center of rotation. So in this diagram off to the right, that would be this point P. All right, let me highlight that. The center of rotation right there. Rays drawn from the center of the rotation to a point and its image form the angle of rotation. So here is a ray going out to Q, which is the pre-image point. And here is a ray going out to Q prime, the image point. The angle between that is 40 degrees. That's the angle of rotation. Going counterclockwise is positive. Going counterclockwise is negative. A rotation about a point P through an angle of X degrees maps every point Q in the plane to a point Q prime so that one of the following properties is true. If Q is not the center of rotation P, then QP, which is right here, equals Q prime P prime, okay? If Q is not the center of rotation P, then QP equals Q prime P prime, and the measure of angle QP Q prime this angle here equals x degrees. Or if Q is the center of rotation P, then Q equals Q prime. If Q is the center of rotation P, then Q equals Q prime. All right, so there's the core concept. Okay, here's example one. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on constructions. In this course, we're kind of pressed for time, but I do want to explain it real quickly in a video. Um, example one says to draw a rotation. Draw a 120 degree rotation of triangle A, B, C about this point P. So the first thing you want to do is get a ruler and you want to draw a straight line from A to or from P to some point on the triangle. And you want to be really accurate. I'm going to go out to A. I could go to C. I could go to B. But I'm just going to draw a line from point P to vertex A, like so. Okay, now I'll move my ruler out of the way. So I have this line segment here. That is just simply used so that I can take my protractor. And what you want to do is you want to put this the stylus, the center, right on P as such, and then rotate the protractor so that that line is right on the line you just drew. So this is the zero degree line. And then I'm gonna get my marker or pen and I'm gonna go out 120 degrees. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40. Opening this way, we want to use the inside numbers. 120 is right out here. So I wanna draw a line out to this point right out here, right at 120 degrees. So now that I move this and I put this ruler right on that point I just created and then bring it up, draw my line. And there is where my 120 degrees is. Okay, so then once I do that, I want to draw a segment that's the same length as AP going out here to find A prime. Okay, so I'm uh, as you can see, I'm using ver uh, several tools to do this. So I used a ruler to draw AP. Then I used a protractor to find a 120 degree angle. So this angle right here is 120 degrees. And then I'm going to take, I thought I turned this to green. Then I'm going to take, what's going on? Let me just, why is that not changing color? Just a moment. Okay, so anyhow, what you're going to do is you take the point of your compass 
And then you move this in and you try to find the right radius of, and it's really difficult to do electronically. It's easier in real life, but it's pretty close right there. And I would draw an arc around. And so that's a little bit outside. So I'm gonna put my dot a little bit outside. I'm just approximating here. So there is where A prime would be, okay? So I drew AP, I've used a protractor to find 120 degrees and I drew a ray out past A prime. And then I've used an arc of a circle to find A prime the same distance as AP. So now A prime or AP is the same length as A prime P. So I can mark that. I can now say this is congruent to that. And I can erase my array all the way back to that line right there. So there is where A would end up. And then I have to repeat that for all vertices. So then again, I'm going to let me use black again. And I'll just put my ruler back here. And what I'm doing is drawing a line from P to B. Then I take my protractor and I put it at P again. I'm going to rotate it so that that blue line is right on PB. That is zero degrees. I come out to 120 degrees, which is right he up here, and put a dot. Move my protractor out of the way and get my ruler and draw a segment, a ray, I should say, from P out to my new point. So I'm going to draw this out to here. So there is 120 degrees from here to here. Okay, that is PB going out to somewhere um, where B prime will be. Then I take my rule or my compass and I put the point on P. I rotate it around. Can't rotate it if that's not on the screen. And I put this right on P, rotate it, open it to the same or as close as possible to B. So that is PB right there. Right about there looks like the rotation. And I rotate around and I want that intersection right there. And there's B prime. Okay, so now let me just clean this up. I'm going to erase this all the way down to the segment. And, and I'm going to delete my arc. Okay, so here is, now we have PB equal to PB prime. And I have to do this one more time. So then I'm gonna take my ruler and I haven't drawn a circle from P to C yet. So I put a, the ruler there, line it up with C and I will draw my line segment from P to C, and all that is for is to put this protractor on P and rotate it so that my zero is right on PA. And then I go out and I put a dot at 120 degrees, which is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not on, P, not PA, we already did that. I want PC right here. So then I go out 120 degrees and that's over here. So I put a dot out here to identify 120 degrees. I then get my ruler again. So these constructions are pretty time consuming. And there is my ray. That's 120 degrees from here to C. That's 120 degrees. Okay. And then I take my compass one more time and rotate it around and I wanna open it up to C. So I bring this down, let's close it a little bit more, right about there. And notice it's just a bit off, so I'm gonna go outside a little bit. So this is where A prime would be. All right, move all my tools out of the way and get rid of this segment that goes beyond 
to there and then delete this part. So now I have the vertices and now I just need to connect them. So if I put my ruler on a prime and rotate it up to B prime, and let me choose a different color now, I haven't used blue yet, I will draw my segment. So I'm off just a smidge here, so let me fix it. Try to be as accurate as possible. So there's A prime, B prime. Actually, let me leave it there and rotate to P. I want to now do a C, which is over to here, and then finally move this to C and rotate it up to B prime. C prime, B prime segment is what I'm drawing right now. Okay, so this is C prime, A prime, B prime, C prime, this should still be a right angle. And those two triangles should be congruent. The blue one and this black one, which was right here. It's hard to see now because I drew black lines to make it. So rotated 120 degrees. There's A prime, C prime, B prime. Okay. And that's how you rotate a figure on a piece of paper. Okay, so I changed my mind on this. I'm not going to have you do three, four, and six, but if you were to do it, those would be the ones to practice. I'm not going to assign those. Okay, so let's take a look at a core concept. We won't be doing rotations in class just on a plain piece of paper, but we will be doing it on a coordinate plane. And the coordinate rules for rotations about the origin when a point A comma B is rotated counterclockwise about the origin, the following are true. For a rotation of 90 degrees, you're going to go from quadrant A, where this blue point is right here, A comma B is in quadrant A, uh, 1. If you rotate it 90 degrees, that's a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees, it ends up negative B comma A. If you rotate it 180 degrees, A and B are where they were, but they're both negative. So A, B becomes negative A, negative B. So if this was 5, 4, it'd be negative 5, negative 4. If this was 5, 4, this would be negative 4, comma, 5. And then finally, if you do a 270 degree counterclockwise, counterclockwise rotation, then A, B would become B, comma, negative A. So if this was 5, 4, it'd be 4, negative 5, for example. Okay, so that's the coordinate rules. Those are the three rules a b to b negative b a a b to negative a negative b and a b to b negative a okay so these two are the same but the sign negations are the different first or second okay so that's just something we need to remember when we're doing the next exercises okay so here's example two rotating a figure in the coordinate plane so we're going to graph a quadrilateral and it's R, S, T, U, with vertices R, 3, 1. So I'm going to graph that. So over 3, up 1, here's R. And I'm not going to label the A, B, or the R, S, T, and U until I'm done, so I don't have to draw my line through the name. Um, so then we have S as 5, 1. So over 5, up 1, here's S. T is 5, negative 3. And U is 2, negative 1. So this was R, S, T and U. And then I'm just going to use my tool here rather than a ruler to draw the segments um, from each point. So here's RS. Here's ST. And let me just fix that. I was just off a hair. All right, that should be good. And then T U and then U R. Let me make those a little bit thicker. Okay, so there is our quadrilateral R S T U. We're going to rotate it 
270 degrees about the origin. So my point of rotation is the point zero, zero. We're rotating this 270 degrees this way, counterclockwise. Okay, a positive rotation is always counterclockwise. So what was my rule for 270? A, B becomes B negative A. All right, so I'm gonna write that there. A comma B becomes B comma negative A. There's my rule, and I'm gonna do that for each one. So for R, we'll start with R. R was the point three comma one. R prime is going to end up, so this is B negative A, so the B comes first, which is one, comma negative A, which is negative three. So I have the point one negative three, and I'll do that in red. So I go over one, down three, and there is my R prime. Okay, and then I'm going to do S, which was originally five comma one, and now S prime is, instead of five, one, I'm going to switch and it's going to be B comma negative A again. So I'm going to go over one and down five. So here is S prime and I just keep doing this. And finally we do T. T was the point five, negative three. And that's going to become T prime. And the rule is take the B first, which is negative three, comma, the ne negative A, which is five. So it's negative five. So I'm gonna go left three down five, which is here. And there's my T prime. And then last but not least, U. And U is the point two, comma, negative one. So U prime is going to become negative one, comma, negative two. So when I do that, I go left one, down two, and then I connect the dots. So let me make it a little bit thicker, and let me make it red, and I'm going to draw my vertical one first. Doesn't matter how you draw these, okay? And then it's over to here, up to here, and then finally over to here. And I didn't label my U, U prime. Okay, so there is a 270 degree rotation of RS TU, and now it's R prime, S prime, T prime, U prime. Same shape figure rotated 270 degrees. Okay, performing compositions with rotations. Postulate 4.3, rotation postulate states that a rotation is a rigid motion. In other words, when you rotate something about a, about a fixed point, what you are rotating does not change size or shape. Line segments stay the same, angle measures stay the same. So because the rotation is a rigid motion, that's the key to this, rigid motion, and a rigid motion preserves length and angle measures, the following statements are true for the rotation shown. So segment DE, is going to be equal to D prime E prime, okay? Segment EF is going to be equal to segment E prime F prime. And segment FD is going to be equal to segment F prime D prime. That's all that that is saying. All three pieces are gonna have the same length when you rotate, okay? So then if we look at angle measures now, then it says the measure of angle D, angle D is right here, is going to be congruent to the measure of angle D prime. The measure of angle E is congruent to E prime. And the measure of angle F is congruent to the measure of angle F prime. Okay, in the rotation, the angle measures stay the same. Now notice these marks. One mark on DE, one mark on D prime E prime. The single marks mean they're congruent. The double marks are congruent to each other and the triple marks are congruent to each other. The single arc is congruent to the single arc. The dual arc is congruent to the one with the dual arc. And the one with three arches or arcs, I mean, is equal to the one with three arcs. 
Because a rotation is a rigid motion, the composition theorem, which is 4.1, guarantees that compositions of rotations and other rigid motions, such as translations and reflections, are all rigid motions. Okay, example three is performing compositions. Graph segment RS with endpoints R1, negative 3. So I'm not even going to read any further. I'm just going to do that. R is at the point 1, negative 3. So go over 1, down 3. Here is R. S is 2, negative 6. Okay, so S is here. So let me move my R. That's why I don't like labeling first. I don't know where the other point is yet. And then it gets in the way. Here is R. Here is S. I will draw a line segment from one to the other, like so. Let me make it red. Okay, so there's segment RS. Done. And then we're going to graph its image, which means that it's copy. It's after a composition. So we're going to reflect it in the y-axis. So let me switch to green. So if I'm going to reflect in the y-axis, the y-axis is this vertical one. Most common mistake is doing the wrong axis. We're not reflecting across x. We're ref reflecting in the y-axis. So the y-axis is here. R is one unit away from the y-axis. So R prime will be one unit on the other side. So here is R prime. S is one, two away from the y-axis. So one, two away will be my S prime. Then I draw a segment from S to R prime. So there is a reflection, kind of moved it a little bit. That's better. So there's a reflection in the y-axis. R prime, S prime is an image of my pre-image RS. Then we're going to rotate the green segment around the origin, 90 degrees. So that is right here. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So if I go back a couple slides, a rotation of 90 degrees is AB becomes negative BA. So I'm going to write that. So AB is going to become negative B comma a. Okay, so then I'm going to choose blue for this. So my R prime is at negative one, negative three. And so that's going to become an, the opposite sign of the second going first. So negative three is now going to go first and it's not going to be negative anymore. Negative, negative three is positive. And then comma A, which was negative one. So I'm going to go over three, down one, and there is my R double prime. And I should have that right here as well, R double prime. And then I do S prime, which is at negative two, negative six. Okay, so that's going to become S double prime. And we're just switching the A and the B, and the B becomes negated. So a negative, negative 6 is 6, comma, negative 2. So I go over 6, down 2, put a dot there, and there's my S double prime. And then just to finish it off, we're going to draw a segment from our double prime to S double prime. <clears throat> okay, so what did we do? We took R reflected it across the y-axis, and then rotated it about the origin 90 degrees counterclockwise. And we ended up at R double prime, S double prime. So that is how you do a composition of rigid motions. Okay, identifying rotational symmetry. A figure in the plane has rotational symmetry when the figure can be mapped onto itself by rotation of 180 degrees or less about the center of the figure. This point is called the center of symmetry. So here in this diagram, let me switch to pen. The center of symmetry is right there. Note that the rotation can be either clockwise or counterclockwise. So I can go either direction. And what happens is if the whole thing lands on top of itself after rotating it less than, or 180 degrees or less, then it's got rotational symmetry. 
Okay, so for example, in the figure below, it has rotational symmetry because a rotation of either 90 degrees, which is this one, or 180 degrees, which is this one, maps the figure onto itself, but a rotation 45 degrees does not. So in other words, if I took and outlined this, let me just do it really quick. It won't be perfect, but if I took this and outlined it like so, there is my shape. Well, if I took that, and moved it on top of the original, there's a 45 degree rotation. Obviously it didn't land on top of itself. It's halfway in between the pedals. But if I brought it over here and rotated it another uh, 45 degrees, then a 90 degree rotation, so it would be right there. And if I rotate it 180 degrees from there, it's going to land on itself again, okay? So that's what we mean. So let me just do that again with the original. Okay, so here I copied the original. Oh, it's exploded, so let me put it together. Okay, so if I take this and let me move it over here, what they're saying is if I rotate that 90 degrees, like so, it landed right on top of itself. There's a 90 degree rotation, okay? If I take the original and bring it over here and set it there, there's the original, rotate it 180 degrees and it lands right on top of itself. That is rotational symmetry. So the figure above ha also has what's called point symmetry in which 180 degree rotation which is a 180 degree rotational symmetry. So if 180 degrees maps it onto itself, then it also has point symmetry. So there's rotational symmetry and also point symmetry if the 180 degree rotation lands on itself, okay? Okay, here's example four, identifying rotational symmetry. Does the figure have rotational symmetry? If so, describe any rotations that map the figure onto itself. So what I've done here is I've made copies of all of these. So if I bring this up and set it right on top or just leave it here and rotate it, if I rotate it 90 degrees, that's obviously not gonna land right on top. See how you can see the one behind? If I rotate it 180 degrees, it's going to look like this. And if I bring that over, that is a duplicate. That is the same. So I rotated that 180 degrees. So does the figure have rotational symmetry? Yes. And it has a 180 degree rotation. Okay, so yes, it has 180 degrees rotational symmetry. Okay. The next one I'm going to look at is the octagon. If I rotate this just that much, it is a duplicate of the original. So there's one. If I rotate it this much, that's 90 degrees. So the other one was 45. So here's 90 degree rotation, and it looks just like the original. Rotate this another 45, which is 135 degrees and it looks just look just like the original. Rotate it another 45 to 180, and it also has 180 degrees rotational symmetry. So does this have rotational symmetry? And the answer is yes. And this one has 45 degree, 90 degree, 135 degree, and 180 degree rotational symmetry. Okay. And now the last one, the trapezoid. Here's the trapezoid right here, identical. If I rotate it 90 degrees, it's obviously not going to land on top of itself. See how it overlaps? If I rotate it 180 degrees, 
it does not land on top of itself. See how the longer side, <clears throat> these are not identical. One's upside down, they will not land on top of each other. If I rotate this another to 270, obviously not the same. I have to rotate this 360 degrees to get it to look like itself again. When you can't rotate something 180 degrees or less, the answer is no rotational symmetry. So this trapezoid does not have rotational symmetry. Okay, now you should be able to do 17, 18, and 20. Okay, this brings us to the end of chapter 4.3 and the exercises I want you to do are seven through 41, the ones listed here. Have a great day.